this is going to be the last video that I make on Jeremy 13 for Snow White's Poison Bite. Alan, what's the reason that the band fell, that the band fell, that the band fell? A lot of people wonder why I don't wear glasses in these videos, and it's because the ring light shows up and it looks like I'm having Mickey Mouse eyes. Having Mickey Mouse eyes. When I said that I hoped that I was going to make another Snow White's Poison Bite video, I didn't fucking mean like this. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andro Grimm, and today I have some tea to spill about the miserable man who tried to take down my YouTube channel. As I have discussed previously, Snow White's Poison Bite is a band that I absolutely adore throughout my teenage years, and it's something that I still listen to quite regularly. I still love their music. I think that every piece that they made was incredibly influential and had an amazing fan base behind it. I can definitely attest to this because of how many comments that I got on my most recent and currently the only video that I have of them on my channel. I used to have three, but well, I'll explain in just a moment. Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, though, I would like to say that I am joined in this video by the former vocalist of Snow White's Poison Bite, Juso Puaka. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Otherwise, I'm just an American bigot. My friend actually told me about it. He just told me that there is a new video of about Snow White's Poison Bite, and I was like, Oh shit, we have to make like reaction you the video out of this. <laughs> like... <laughs> prelude to this awful video, let me just say I am in no way going to monetize this one. I do not like drama, so I do not plan on making any sort of profit off of it. It's just been a really rough time ever since it happened, and I want to get the negative feelings off of my chest. So with the interview with Juso and the great time that we had discussing everything, I'm happy to bring you the information he told me so that I can correct some of the mistakes that happened in my interview with Hanu. But before we move on, I want to make it abundantly clear that I do not blame Hanu for anything that has happened, for anything that he got wrong in the video, for anything that Alan has done to me ever since the video originally got uploaded onto YouTube. He knew what information he learned or was told. He was not there when the band had originally started, so he could have only had so much info. Hanu is awesome, he and I are still friendly, and I definitely intend on keeping it that way. So in the original interview, Hanu and I were under the assumption that the band originally came together because they were friends, and they brought Jeremy in, and they just wanted to bring the whole thing together. However, that is not actually the case. The Snow West Potion Bite was Alan's project. He started it all. He had the idea and stuff like that. We were friends like a couple years earlier, maybe. I was drinking at his home <laughs> because the best cases ever happen when you are drunk. I was partying with Alan and he said, I have these riffs and uh, I need a screamer. He played the riffs there and I just said, I can't be a screamer. I have never screamed <laughs> anything like that. I went back home to my parents' house and yelled like six hours straight. Then I went to the Alan's house and made so-called audition. He just said, you in, let's go get some beers. From what I understood, it was you and your group of friends, and then Alan joined in later. But but you're saying that Alan started it, and then you just came along. Yeah, he had Cinderella song, and those were the riffs, and Sleeping Beauty gotcha. also. Yeah, after that, we are looking for members. Mm -hmm. We didn't know Tuomo. We found him like from the internet. <laughs> Alan started all the project, then the people started to come in. So when Juso and Jeremy got the project together and got to work on music, they did go through the Hemos Festival and release the demo, which Juso said that if he can find a copy, that he would give to me. Pretty cool. After the demo, Juso was apparently removed from the band, but for really odd reasons. Two days after they signed the contract and stuff like that, I was thrown out the band by Alan. And I called Tema of a drummer and Tuoma, and they were like, what the fuck? And I'm back in. When I left Snow West Potion Bite, my name was removed from Wikipedia, Snow West Potion Bite. I think Alan tried to remove everything, every shit <laughs> that I have done and so with how Juso said that Alan treated him, a person that he had known for a long time, for literal years, I feel like this next part should come as no surprise. I will get more into the actual interview very, very soon, but I want to reference back to a video that I made a little while ago where I could answer where have all my Snow White's Poison Bite videos gone. 
Last year, four months after the Snow White's Poison Bite disaster video came up, I got a message from the 13th Instagram page. I was incredibly ecstatic. I was really excited. I thought that I was going to have a friendly conversation with someone who I was a very, very big fan of. However, that didn't happen. This is the entire conversation that I have with Jeremy. Nothing is being edited out, nothing is being concealed. From beginning to end, this is how Jeremy talked to me. Trying to pry my information so that he can find out more info about me. Trying to get me in trouble because I would because I made a mini documentary about a band and its impact on music, as well as why they disappeared off the face of the earth. Then he proceeded to be incredibly vague, and instead of telling me what I had done wrong to offend him, he just kept telling me to give him my information. Then came the reason as to why he decided to attack me. I am now going to advise you to not invade my privacy again in any form. Never make any more content regarding anything about myself personally. What kind of ass backwards bullshit is this? Do not misquote me. By no means am I saying that because I'm a fan that I deserve his respect. That is completely irrational. That's completely untrue. I don't want him to do anything that makes him uncomfortable or make him come out from hiding or drag his name through the mud. And let this be a message that I stand very strongly to and firmly behind. If you have a problem with somebody, talk to them. Talk to them about what the problem is. If Alan had come to me more respectfully than just essentially grabbing me by the throat and demanding my information, I would have been more than happy to discuss what I did to make him feel uncomfortable, make him unhappy, make him feel like I was being disrespectful to him. This boy didn't even say hello to me. You didn't do anything wrong. Alan was removing everything that he could from the yeah. snow was poison by. Like, the first uh. thing that he said to me was, what's your full name and email address? He didn't say... They, he, <laughs> he came straight. He came straight for the fucking throat. He didn't even try to, like, hey, I, I, I saw your video on Snow White's Poison Bite or anything like that. He just immediately yeah. was just like, what's your information? <laughs> Believe me, by no means am I saying that because I am a YouTuber, YouTuber, because I have six videos that have thousands of views, or even just because I'm a fan of him, by no means does that mean that I deserve his respect. Respect is something that you earn, respect is something that you do. I don't deserve his respect just because I'm a big fan of him. But what makes me so angry about this whole situation is the fact that he was so blatantly disrespectful about the whole thing. If he had even just started off a conversation with a, hello, Zondriel, I saw your video about my band, can we discuss something about it? Didn't even have to be that word for word. But if he had brought it up in a nice manner, this would have been a completely different story. So let me just put it like this. This video is not about him. This video is about Juso's experience with the band Snow White's Poison Bite and how a person I looked up to attack my channel just because he did some shit that made him infamous throughout his entire country. Mm -hmm. Every f***ing musician that I have met knows Alan's name and they say, no, don't want to work with him. And Tuoma, well, he said we should have left when you left, but the hunger for the making the album was yeah. too great. The interview with Juso itself was absolutely amazing. I was able to talk to him about everything that happened with Jeremy, as well as catch up with him and even find out what he's been up to since he got fired, then rehired, and then left Snow White's Poison Bike. I'm at work. I'm carpenter. I can build my own guitars and stuff like that. <laughs> and then we even talk about politics a little bit. Even though America is quite literally, research speaking, the worst in healthcare, we still have to pay out the ass for it. And again, because our government is run by a bunch of fucking conservatives, we're not going to get free healthcare anytime soon, like most other countries do. Like we have. Exactly. Let me tell you, man, Europe is just sounding better and better and better and better and better and better. But I think the question that's still burning in our minds is what happened that led Jeremy to attacking me and my channel and everything that I've been working for so far. And I'll be completely honest, I don't know. I was making a documentary about the history and what happened to one of my favorite bands growing up. A little bit of improv here. I cannot emphasize enough that I am not looking for praise or adoration from Alan. In fact, I was kind of just expecting nothing was going to happen. And at the end of the day, that it was just gonna be a fun project that inevitably gets lost on my channel. I even acknowledge that in the video. Will this video even get over a hundred views? 
But I think that it's safe to say that especially because they didn't come close to touching Alan's personal life, it's incredibly shocking that he just came for me straight from my throat. Because even though Zondrio Grimm isn't a big channel by any means, I still have so many fond memories and I put a lot of time and effort into my videos, especially that one. That video in particular took many weeks of filming specific shots and even plans on different locations that I was going to be in. Not to get too teary-eyed or anything, but when I made my first Snow White's Poison Bite video, which was actually a 13th video back in 2018, I was overjoyed. I was helping out a person that I loved their content for five years at that point. He and I had talked a couple of times, actually. Not to anything like Juso or Hanu and I have talked about, but it still blew my f***ing mind at the time. And that was when I only had 100 subscribers. Maybe not even that. Not only has the quality of my videos gone up significantly since then, but I would argue that I was working even harder back then, because I didn't have Luke. I didn't have any money because I was working at a gas station at the time. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And yet when 13th came out and made their debut, I was all over that shit. And a lot of Snow White's fans were too. I can't tell you how many people direct messaged me, commented on the video, etc. that they were wondering what happened to the bands that they loved and they disappeared and that my video sharing what happened helped them out with that. I'm just so confused, hurt, upset, name it, I feel it. I don't understand why he is so obsessed with destroying everything about Snow White's Poison Bite ever existing. Just like you said, find in its history or try to hide it because you cannot do that. If you mess up, you mess up. You cannot hide it. And you know what the weird thing is? The point of that video was to make sure that we knew that Alan wasn't dead in a ditch somewhere. The main focus of it was specifically so I could talk about one of my favorite bands as a kid, no doubt, but Hanu told me that he missed his friend. And I sympathize with that entirely. I've lost friends, I've done things that I wish that I could take back, or even when my best friend committed the unalive, I wish for months that there was anything that I could have done to fix it. So I think I made it clear in the video that I expected nothing, but I hoped for the best. And you know what's really shitty? What is really shitty about that whole thing? That part worked! Because of my video, Alan and Hanu reconnected and they became friends again. Great! Fantastic! I'm genuinely overjoyed that because of that video and because it met its potential, it made lives better and made lives happier. So basically, Alan saw the video. He watched the video and it connected with him to a degree that he came out of his hiding even if it was just for a little bit so that he and Hanu could become friends again. And I couldn't be happier about that. By the way, the reason that I know that this happened is because when Alan tried to take down my YouTube channel, I messaged Hanu and he confirmed a couple of things. However, I will not be sharing those messages on here because Hanu and I are still cool. I love the dude and I genuinely do not want bad things betwixt the both of us. But if you can, I ask that you trust me on that one specific Thing. Continuing on my rant, so Alan saw the video. He was invested enough into it to rekindle an old friendship. And what does he do? He fucking attacks me. Goes for my throat. Goes for my dreams. Goes for everything that I've worked for in my life and tried to destroy it. I'm still so confused because I don't know what I did to make him hate me so much. And you know, I'm honestly sorry that I did something in that video to where Alan felt like I was invading his privacy. But that might just be because I'm an emotional guy and even though I've had so many friends and even other musicians that I've talked to tell me that I personally did nothing wrong, I can't help but feel like I f***ed up something that could have been a great musical piece of history by offending Alan like I did. I know that a great chunk of this was just me ripping into Alan attacking me, but this whole thing has haunted me for the last nine months, or however long it is now, when the video gets released. As I stated in my video talking about 2022's heavy metal releases, 2022 was the worst year of my life. I lost an amazing job, I lost any time that I had because I was scrambling and trying to make sure that I didn't become homeless the hard way, and then as if nothing else could go wrong, something that someone that I looked up to my whole life essentially told me to go f*** myself. It was rude, it was unfair, it was entirely uncalled for. And yet, even with that information in my mind, I still can't help but feel like I did something wrong to cause such a reaction. So let me end this off by saying this. As a person on this planet, Alan is entirely entitled to his privacy. 
absolutely that is not changing. I don't know what he's doing now. I don't know if he's even forgotten that the original video happened, but it is not okay that he came out of this situation so angry, so hateful, and so utterly disrespectful to the point where I had to block one of my favorite artists because he was treating me like I was the worst piece of garbage just for making a documentary about one of his former bands. I wish I didn't have to make this, but the fact that it's happened and it almost killed what remains of my channel nine, 10, maybe 11 months ago at this point, depending on when the video gets out, it is not okay. I'm not angry at Alan anymore. I've had my anger, my tears, I still have my emotions. I'm not angry anymore. I'm just disappointed. I still love Snow White's Poison Bite. I still love the hours that I spend listening to their music. I love the fact that I can come over here to my CD collection and put them right here right there. But as far as I'm concerned, the memories do not live up to the legend. That's all I have to say. And this Sleepy Beauty game, I brought like 80% of the lyrics. I brought the verses, mm -hmm. but he was trying to store all the fucking royalties. I only started like 2%, 1%. I know that later, like when they had t-shirts money and stuff like that yeah the merchandise yeah alan stole it or oh, took it all and never paid the other guys i'm like always having like the background dude when i brought the lyrics to the sleeping beauty like 80 percent alan didn't want my lyrics or stuff like that so i just was a screamer let's the make a bag <laughs> <laughs>